Great. Well, welcome and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for being here today. Really appreciate it. And um, today is the first of the relaunch of the Business at Its Best seminars. And we're going to be talking about how to manage work and lead people. Um, I'm Don Johnson. I am the Chamber's newest staff member here. I am the Vice President of Partner Services. Very excited to be here and working with you all. And uh, like I've said on every Zoom call, I, I can't wait to meet you all in person. Um, I don't know how long that'll be, but I hope it's sooner than later for sure. Um, I, I have 19 years of Chamber experience and like I said, very excited to be here to serve the partners of South Central Ca uh, Kentucky community. I'm looking forward to get, getting to know you all and um, just again, very excited. So a few housekeeping rules. Today's session is being recorded. So please keep your mic on mute for the duration of the presentation. If you have questions, those can be submitted via the chat window and you can see an example of that that Katie's just submitted. Um, on the side and we will have a Q&A portion at the conclusion of the presentation where we will read your submission uh, for Dr. Cosby to answer. Uh, but before we get started, uh, we need to make sure we honor our sponsor who is uh, Graves Gilbert Clinic. They're the title sponsor for the Business at Its Best series and they have a short clip that we'd like to show. Telehealth Visits, which allows patients and physicians to use an app to communicate via video chat. Any patient who would like to schedule a telehealth appointment is encouraged to call their Graves Gilbert Clinic physician's office directly or call the Graves Gilbert Clinic telehealth hotline at 270-746-5790. Awesome. Thank you, Kenzie. And thank you to our sponsor, Graves Gilbert Clinic. Can't do these events and, and well, a lot of the events that we're, we're going to be doing without our sponsors. So um, I wanted to introduce our speaker today, Dr. Dana Cosby. Uh, Dana is an MBA director of pediological, I probably said that wrong, assistant professor for management at the Golden Ford College of Business with WKU. In addition to her PhD, Dr. Cosby holds the designations for of SHRM, which is SHRM, SCP, also SPHR, the Senior Professional in Health uh, Human Resources designations through the National Society for Human Resource Management. She also holds a designation in Global Professional in Human Resources and CCP, Certified Compensation Professional designation earned through the National World at Work Organization. Her expertise and experience includes leadership roles in both private and public sectors. Dana, we appreciate you partnering with us on this very much, and I'm going to turn the floor over to you. Okay. Well, thank you so much for inviting me to talk. You know, I, I miss the connection with, with people in the business community, you know, just so much, and, and I'm really thrilled to have the opportunity to talk with you all today um, about this important subject. And so what I'm going to do now is hopefully kick this off. Can you all see my screen? Okay, perfect. All right, so, <clears throat> you know, here we are, we are all struggling in this time of change to very quickly uh, move into this new normal and what we're calling the new normal. And so what I'd like to talk to you about today are some tips, tricks, techniques that you can consider um, in navigating uh, kind of where we are today. So I want to just say that when, you know, when the pandemic started and, you know, we started thinking about what it was going to like, what it was going to be like to work from home, you know, here's, here's my vision. You know, I have my laptop, I have my cup of coffee, my nice little notebook with my pen and my to-do list and my iPhone and I am just set and I am ready to work. And I, and I think in our mind, this is kind of what we think about. Um, as we think about the ideal remote situation. Um, but as you all know, organizations are not only hard pressed to quickly um, change into this virtual environment, but mix that in with some of the, the other challenges that come along. And I will say, for example, homeschooling children 
And this lovely dog, this lovely girl is the daughter of one of my colleagues at, at Western. And um, her mother has her nicely organized at their kitchen table, homeschooling. And, you know, we have this nice planned environment. And then we have some, some folks, you know, that are, that have uh, preschoolers and those, those children are nicely writing their, their letters and, and keeping on with their learning. But the reality is that for a lot of the professionals, this is what we see. Um, and these are two of my favorite people in the world. Um, on the left, you see Dr. Whitney Peak, who is our Director of Entrepreneurship at Western. She has two lively little boys. Um, and um, as she works to get the, the great things uh, accomplished that she has to accomplish every day, um, her husband's there to help with, you know, with the boys. But still, we see costume changes two or three times a day. Um, and this picture is, um, this is actually my daughter, Ellie, um, who is now remote working at home um, in Mobile for a large German chemical company. And she has a Corona baby. This is, a, this is our little granddaughter, baby Kate. And Ellie sent me this picture and said, this is how I answer emails these days. And so, you know, we have all of these different challenges that are coming and you can see some of the other some of the other things that go on while we're all trying to work. And so we, as we think about this new normal, you know, we're not just dealing with all of the, the technical things and, you know, getting people the tools that they need and the social support that they need and the information they need, but we also have this other um, dynamic with, you know, with this um, staying safe, staying in place um, order that we have going on now. But I'd like to tell you, that um, as, as um, Dom mentioned, you know, my background is heavy, heavy in human resources. And my favorite, favorite thing to do is I'm a, I'm a human capital trends geek completely. And I love this survey that Deloitte does where they do this global human capital trends survey that's, you know, it's, it's hundreds of thousands of people, big, broad things to, to see what's coming in the world of, of people. And it, interestingly enough, even before the, the pandemic, we were seeing trends in the alternate workforce or new ways of thinking about work and jobs coming in a, in a very big way. And so in their, in their 2019 survey, they projected that by 2020, people kind of doing their own thing, working you know, in self-employed alternative workforce arrangements was already expected to be about 42 million people in the United States. And when we talk about what that looks like, what the alternative workforce looks like, it comes in different forms. Um, there are freelancers, and of course those are pay people who get paid by some unit of time. You know, they're paid by the hour, they're paid by the days, that kind of thing. Uh, gig workers who are paid by a particular task or um, sort of project scope. Um, and then we're seeing a, a, a surge in what we call crowd workers. And crowd workers are probably the least known in the mainstream, but they are actually people that sort of compete to see if they win a competition. And if they, if they win the competition of doing the thing that they're competing with, they get money. And if they don't, they don't get any money. And so an example of this is there's a really cool um, web based uh, crowd um, working thing where companies can actually provide a scope of work on um, like a, a logo or a corporate branding program. And then all of these different crowd workers will, will toss a concept or toss an idea, create a logo, create the information that they need. And then if they win that competition, they get the money and then the organization gets the, the thing that they've created. So all of this you know, coming into the pandemic, this was out there. And so organizations were saying, okay, how do we, you know, how we, what are we seeing with these alternative work arrangements with people working remotely? You know, what are the things that we need to do to really, um, you know, use, use these um, arrangements strategically? And so, um, so now we are where we are. And um, this notion of remote work is really here and it got here very quickly and people have adapted and, and are continuing to adapt. And I think 
one of my favorite quotes um, is, a bend in the road does not have to be the end of the road unless you fail to make the curve. And so, you know, we're here at, at this part of the, you know, business transformation and the things that will come out of this time may be things that, that innovate us or change us in ways that, that are really going to be exciting for the future, as painful as they may seem now. So when you have remote teams or this idea of, you know, remote work, there are certain opportunities and challenges that come with that. And as you all know, and as I'm sure Don and um, Katie and Kenzie from the Chamber know, you know, we have a lot going on with workforce, with our workforce, and needing more people in our workforce um, here regionally. And this is a global thing for developed countries because of demographics, simple demographics. And so people are struggling to find talent. And so one of the opportunities that can be considered when you're when you're working remotely is this idea about hey we can access talent that we need maybe not just from here but but in other locations and so that that may provide um, some opportunities for new talent um, different skill sets etc that that companies may be open to when they're considering re you know remote working um, there's also more flexibility for companies for employees um, this can lead to nice morale boosts for employees when they're able to have that kind of flexibility to work at home. In terms of the ideas that you get from remote um, people, if you are coming together to brainstorm, tend to be better. And that is because in the virtual environment, you may have more participation from people that otherwise wouldn't have participated. And, you know, when you're using things like chats or other virtual tools, you may really tap into some creativity um, in your workforce that, that you haven't had before. Um, another really cool thing about remote teams is you, in, in some ways, you find a much more um, effective communication pattern and better communication in your organization because you have a flatter hierarchy. Um, sometimes when we're all together in an organization, you know, we'll think if we just report to our manager or we, if we just report to the manager in charge or, or whatever, that information is going to automatically get to where it needs to go. And that doesn't always happen. Uh, but when you're having to, to really rely on virtual communication and create systems for transparency and collaboration, you can find that the flow of communication is also better. Of course, there are challenges. Um, in the virtual environment, communication can be the greatest thing um, in terms of improvement of systems, but some of the basic social context is way more difficult to navigate. And so um, because you don't have the social cues so much that you have in face-to-face -face or richer media of communication, you can kind of struggle to pick up on, on things um, as quickly as you might in a face-to-face -face situation. So as a result, one of the major challenges with virtual um, teamwork um, is that conflict can erupt more quickly, and that's because you're not picking up on some of those social cues that arise um, you know, as you go through day-to-day um, -day operations. So as managers and as employees that are working virtually, you have to be very mindful of these challenges and be very purposeful and intentional to, um, to try to mitigate those. Um, Pre-pandemic, um, there was a big survey conducted um, and they were looking at the people that were working remotely and they were saying, you know, what's your biggest struggle with working remotely? And not surprisingly, the idea about um, unplugging after work, it can be problematic or the loneliness when you feel isolated, um, just working at home by yourself, there's kind of a, a, a void of, of some of the personal relationships that you build in a face-to-face -face situation. Um, collaboration and communication, you know, all of the typical suspects that you might expect were reported on this survey. And so, you know, there are some tips, you know, as you are setting up people to work at home, as you are setting yourself up to work at home, that you can think about that can kind of help with some of these um, issues. And so, for example, one, one idea is to make sure that you have a dedicated workspace. 
you know, it can be your office, it can be, you know, a space in your den, it can be, or, or wherever it is, um, but have this dedicated space so that you can mentally um, get in the mindset of, you know, when I do work, this is, this is where I, this is my place. This is these, this is where I go. And that can kind of help you in kind of moving through uh, life between being, um, you know, engaged in work, not engaged in work, because you can certainly feel like, you know, you're working all the time if your work is everywhere. Um, and so that, that is one tip that I would provide for you, which is to, to make sure that employees know to have a dedicated space. Another really good idea um, for employees as, as they're navigating the, the work part of this is to think about, you know, try to stay on a schedule, you know, try to, you know, wake up, take a shower, get dressed, um, you know, just kind of be in you know, in the, the work mode, um, in those kinds of ways, even though you can stay in your pajamas all day, it's probably better for your, your mental um, direction if you, if you don't. All right. So as we're thinking about managing work and leading teams remotely, I was thinking about a, you know, a cool way to do this. And so I thought, all right, so playbooks are, are, you know, really important these days. We need playbooks for things. So I thought I would present to you all kind of some ideas and and things to think about in terms of a playbook for managing work and leading teams remotely and so does anybody well does anybody know what this this graphic is can you unmute yourself does anybody know what this is a football play a football good dawn are you a michigan state fan Oh no, go blue, baby. <laughs> okay. Well, yes, th this is a football, this is a football play. Um, but this is actually a football play. Um, we used to have a, a football coach named Jeff Brom at WKU. And when I was looking for graphics for my playbook, this was the one that came up time and time and time again. And this evidently was, you know, kind of one of his plays. Um, when when he was here and and our our team was very successful um in running said plays all right and i know just enough about playbooks for football and football in general to be dangerous so we'll move on um <clears throat> so the number one thing in the playbook in this in this new normal is that people come first period um organizations when you know when we're in, we're we're in the situation we are, you are really communicating volumes to your employees in terms of the you know the the ways that you set up the remote work, how you communicate with them, how you drive your your real culture into the business, and so the new normal is going to require, of course, intentionality on the people side of business. And the really cool thing, if there is a cool thing about this period, is that organizations can stop and think about this intentionality on, on the side of business. But here are just some tips to think about um, as managers. Um, number one is, of course, employee safety comes first. We need to make sure as managers and as organizational leaders that you know we're not just saying that we're serious about the recommendations and things, but that you're very serious about social distancing and the other guidelines. You know, we're seeing everyday employers that are, you know, doing um, really cool things to make sure that their employees are safe. Even, even the manufacturing places, you know, that are essential that are still going, you know, they're protecting their employees, they're putting up guards, they're um, providing PPE, they're doing social distancing um, in ways that show those employees that their safety comes first. We're also seeing other companies that haven't done this. And, you know, the result has been very um, detrimental to the, you know, to the other states where, where we've seen some companies not be as serious about it. So, you know, for small businesses, you know, this is such a painful time, such a, such a challenging time, but letting employees know that their safety comes first is really important. Um, that being said, as people move to do work at home, 
Um, some of my friends in corporate safety roles have told me that, you know, that they're still doing some safety reminders for employees as they go home to work, that they, they talk to them about, you know, cords and tripping hazards and those kinds of things. So, you know, safety should be first. Make sure that, that safety is first. Um, <clears throat> the second major tip for managers is to check in with your employees. And, you know, when you're checking in with your employees, it, this is the part of management that is the soft skill, that is the empathetic um, role that, that managers often play, you know, often carry out. <clears throat> and checking in with your employees is super important because the changes that are happening are scary and they're difficult, even at the most basic levels. And so just checking in with your employees and ask them, you know, asking them how they're doing will mean a lot to them. And, you know, so make sure that you, that you incorporate that as part of your, uh, you know, we can't walk around and we can't manage by walking around. We can't understand what's going on, you know, in the, in those old traditional ways. So just be sure to check in with your employees and see how they're doing. When you, are conducting business, <coughs> excuse me, with your stakeholders, with your employees, even virtually. It's very important to set norms and expectations um, that when you are in that virtual time, make sure that all of the employees know that they are expected to be present. So you want to make sure that people's cameras are turned on, that you're not multitasking, that you're, you know, you're not mentally checking out, you're not checking emails on your phone, that you're actually there. Be sure to be present, even virtually. Um, one of the, the uh, improvements, I guess, for, me, for a lot of virtual meetings is that virtual meetings kind of cut to the chase in terms of, you know, getting down to business. And so, you know, while you see those, you know, those productivity improvements in that way, make sure that that presence is part of your design of that meeting. So, for example, if you know that an employee cannot be there um, during a particular time because, you know, I have got a, a customer call here or there or whatever, you know, reschedule those meetings. If, you, if you or your team or you and your team can't commit to doing that during a particular time. Um, the fourth thing that is a, a good general statement about people coming first is to be flexible. In this new normal, meetings can be disrupted by Zoom bombers such as children. How dare you? <gasps> That's my little actress. Oh, no, and Zoom bombers, did you see that? That was the children. Um, or dogs, or doorbells, and so you need to be sure to try to be patient as people do this, um, as they work through this, um, it, because these things are going to happen. Um, also, it, one good tip, and, and you all may be doing this already, that when it, we started doing this um, at the Gordon Ford College of Business, I kind of thought, well, this is strange, but now I have grown really to um, feel connected to the college, um, build a sense of community with fellow employees or with your, with your subordinates through virtual coffee hours or, you know, afternoon happy hours or, you know, what, whatever you want to call it, just a, just a time when people can get together and just connect at the human level. That is going to be key to really keeping your teams cohesive and making sure that, that you're continuing those, those emotional connections that you need socially. The second grouping of tips that I would like to share with you, uh, you know, I was trying to come up with some, some clever acronym or some, you know, some, something to kind of hang this together. And then I thought, you know, these tips are just going to be very to the point. And so, you know, people first is the first point. And the second point is make work work. Um, and so an underlying thing about this whole situation with your employees, with your customers, et cetera, is to remember that what you do right now is going to determine your brand post COVID. You know, the, the, the things that you do in terms of employee relationships, in terms of serving customers, et cetera, all of these things are going to be determining your brand post COVID. So 
remember and make sure that you intentionally put what is in your culture and what you want to be valued in your culture, be sure to cascade it now, even, even in this online world. Make sure that you know what you want your company brand to be and, and be intentional about the culture that you're building. Um, make sure that your employees have what they need to in order to, to do what they need to do. So for example, if, you know, with the technology, you know, if they need laptops, if they need um, noise canceling headphones, if they need webcams, um, work to make sure that your employees have what they need. Um, and third, create policies and norms for what, re what working remotely should look like. The time is gonna be very fluid and work is looking very different but you may have some expectations that you need to set and you need to communicate. So for example, if you have people on your team that are uh, customer facing and you know that they are going to be customer facing through video um, between the hours of, of 10 and two or 10 and three or whatever, and you want them to be in um, business casual attire when they, when they engage with customers, then make sure those, those expectations are communicated so they will know, you know, we, yes, we're working remotely, but, but here are some expectations and some norms that we need to adhere to um, during this difficult time. Um, lots and lots of people are, new, are using new collaboration tools. And in some cases, people have had experience with them. And in some cases, they haven't. Um, it's really easy during this time to, to maybe blow past um, the understanding that, that people will have different levels of understanding of the tools. So make sure that you schedule training for any of the, the new collaboration tools that you might adopt or, or might um, want to adopt. And <clears throat> in terms of the work itself, we're really going to have to start redefining work. And this goes back to some human capital trends uh, you know, that are projected, you know, with the advent of wonderful things like artificial intelligence, with data analytics, with all sorts of things that are not going to um, completely change jobs. They are going to reconfigure jobs and we are going to have super jobs. And these new jobs are going to require that we don't consider things in terms of task A, B, C, D, E, and F that people have carved out as units of work, but rather it's going to be framed more in terms of output. And that's coming, that's coming anyway. Um, and this remote time gives us the chance to think about that. These, these different um, elements of work that we have going on in our organization, you know, we're not having the traditional eight to five necessarily. We need to think about what are the outputs or the results for those jobs. Um, make sure that you recognize the accomplishments of the output as employees are, are engaged in this new reality. Now, the next tip, and this is probably the most important tip for today, has to do with communication. <clears throat> and communication is key always. We know that in face-to-face normal environments and certainly in virtual real or virtual um, working arrangements, it definitely is important. And so some of the best practices that you can think about that really are helping organizations navigate this, you know, some of them are very, very simple, you know, like have a published schedule for daily or weekly meetings. Um, by having the cadence of having meetings, this helps people stay focused and, and helps promote getting things accomplished and getting things done. Um, it's really neat and a great idea to use calendar invitations um, or an app such as Calendly. If you are having to schedule one-on-ones or small group sorts of things, um, email can be you know, just overwhelmingly bog you down kind of communication for professionals. Um, and, you know, an app like Candly will let you sort of say, um, you know, here's a link to my calendar, you know, schedule, schedule a time that's convenient for you for this one-on-one -on -one or 
you know, for this, for this meeting. And so that takes a lot of the back and forth, back and forth, back and forth um, out of email scheduling. And that just um, is, you know, administratively um, transactional and not, not so value added to have all of those back and forths. And so um, using those tools, using, you know, Microsoft calendar invitations, for example, for securing calendars, that's very helpful. The most important thing that I'd like to underscore, and I'll probably say that like 40 times in this presentation, but an important thing to remember in this virtual space and in communicating in this space is to cross check your communication for accuracy. And so some of you all might remember, and some of you may not, but some of you might remember in, in 1999, NASA had a, a failed climate orbiter that was going to, to Mars. And, you know, they had been working on this project and, and it was great, it was going great. And, and when they did the launch, they found out that the virtual teams that had been working on it did not take into account the measurement differences, their perspectives on measurements. And so, for example, one team was reporting their data in um, English Standard measurements and then others were in metrics. And so the, the space program spent a whole lot of money to launch this climate orbiter that never came back. And it was just because there was no cross check on communication. So make sure that you do have cross checks on communications so that, that you can um, ensure that, that you are um, speaking in the same units, et cetera, et cetera. Um, as I mentioned before, make sure to keep an eye on conflict because in this situation, you're going to have things rise and you need to be very mindful um, that, you, that you address conflict very early because conflict cannot be swept under the rug in remote situations. It, it just, it won't and it'll, it'll blow up. So make sure that you deal with conflict timely. Um, also, as part of your culture building, be sure to discuss virtual meeting etiquette and establish norms for that. So for example, um, making sure to let, you know, different people have a voice in meetings, muting the mics if you have loud dogs or wild children, like me for example, or, um, you know, other, other things that will make the process go more smoothly. Now here are some ideas that you can use with people to, um, to kind of keep the flow of communication going. Um, many of you all may have participated in what are called daily stand-up meetings. Have any of you all participated in daily stand-up meetings? Yes? Anybody? What am I gonna say? Yes, Amy, Amy Goodson says, yes, Shelby Harwood says. Okay, so daily stand-up meetings and face-to-face -face things are just really quick stand-up meetings, usually held at the same time of the day. The, they are actual meetings when you stand up, and the reason you do that is to encourage conciseness. And so these meetings are scoped to do a pretty simple thing, to align goals, to talk about progress, and then also to, to point out any urgent issues. So you want to make sure if you do daily stand-up meetings virtually that you schedule a time, 15 minutes or less, usually at the, you know, early in the day, and you have this format. What do we need to get accomplished today? Who needs help? Are there any issues or problems that we anticipate? As a manager, this tool is, is effective because you, you get everybody kind of on the same page and you can align, you can align goals as needed. But the other thing is, um, you have to, as a manager, you have to scope them so that they, in fact, stay 15 minutes or less. So when people try to introduce other topics that aren't appropriate, you have to be a gatekeeper. But these stand-up meetings are a good way to get everybody kind of focused on, on what your goals are, what you have to do, and, and get them rolling. You can also do um, what are called stand-down meetings. And again, this is just the chance to have an opportunity to see, you know, where everything is. Um, how everything ended, what the progress was, those sorts of things. Um, daily stand-down meetings can be shorter. They can be 10 minutes or less. Again, hold them at the same time each day. Um, a really good idea is to have kind of a summary of progress 
that you can kind of post to share in like a virtual workspace so that people understand um, any progress reports, um, that, they, that you have an issues log out there, that you really work hard in this environment to have transparency in what is going on with your organization or your work group. So um, tools and, and different types of things to promote communication, of course, have been implemented very quickly. Um, here are some, some methods and some ways that they can be used and some resources that might be, in, might be um, something for you to check out if you're looking for new, new tools. Um, of course, there are chats um, in the virtual environment. You need to have some way for a chat, um, group chats, um, and some resources might be things like Google Chat, Zoom Chat, or Slack. Um, having a shared virtual workspace where employees can see shared goals or so that they can review presentations that, that are being made or other work products and documents, that shared virtual space is really important. Um, again, things like Google Drive, Confluence, Basecamp. Uh, my daughter, who works for the, for the German company, um, they actually used to use Zoom and they have gone to Microsoft Teams because Microsoft Teams has all of the tools in a consolidated place. And so they're, they're using that for their chats, their workspaces, their virtual meetings and, and everything. Um, when you think about virtual meeting tools, make sure with your video conferencing that you consider things like um, screen sharing capabilities and ease of screen sharing capabilities resources in this area might include things like Zoom, Hangout, Microsoft Teams. Um, but another thing that is very important to be mindful of is the internet can fail. The video technology can go down. And it's really important to have a phone contact sheet. And I'm all about the old school method, meaning a phone contact sheet. But there are technological advancements out there where you have electronic phone contact sheets, but you know, the important thing is to have a list of contact information in case the internet or, or some other technology fails so that you can get um, information to the person that you need to or that you can share information or get information that you need. And so in terms of these um, different forms of communication, um, you know, setting norms is a, is a big part of how you will be effective in managing work and also in, in the overall communication process. And <clears throat> I, I do most of my work in the area of like generational, you know, gen working across the generations, managing across the generations. And I always tell my audiences that, you know, I'm a professor. And now because technology is so much in our life and because immediate response is so much in our life, you know, our, our, um, need for information is immediate we and we get information immediately and so professors forever have had a little disclaimer on syllabuses that say please if you have any problems or questions please send me an email and it and if I haven't responded in 72 hours then um, assume I didn't get it and send it again and students these days are like Oh my gosh, what kind of question would I even have that I don't need the answer for for 72 hours? That's, I mean, you know, what even, what would that even look like? Um, and so, you know, one of the things that, that I've been trying to do with, you know, teaching across the generations is sort of spread the message that you have to have some way for students to get more instant responses or they're not going to feel like they're getting any responses. And that's kind of the same for communication in the virtual world. Um, there are different issues requiring different response times. And so, for example, um, you need to have communication norms to say, all right, if we need immediate response or instant response, then use your phone. Use the phone and call. Um, if your response, you know, can be handled, or if, if the response time needed is like minutes to hours, then use instant messaging or texting. And then if it's something that you can wait for a response for more than a day, use email. And so, you know, having these different communication norms allows you to really expedite 
um, information as, as you need to in this environment when so many inputs are going to be coming in from everywhere. That's deciding what those look like for you are important. You know, for example, having, having a standard to say, you know, issues or questions or whatever will be picked up within 24 hours as a, you know, as a hard and fast rule, for example, but then being able to stagger the response time is truly important. And so with that, um, I wanted to end with this lovely picture of hope. You know, we're, we're here in this, in this interesting time, this challenging time, but, you know, certainly from the, from the business perspective, I have to believe that it's going to make us stronger and it's going to make us more innovative. Um, and with that, I'm just interested in your questions. And I'm also interested in what you all are finding is working best for you. Yeah, so if you have questions, please, please let Dana know or put them in the chat. Right. Or talk. It's okay. I, I, I talk in Zoom classes or, you know, Zoom is okay if, if you want to talk, ask, ask a question. That's completely fine with me. Have a um, I, this is more of a comment than a question. Uh -huh. um, obviously, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm three weeks in, not even full three weeks into my position here, but I was quarantined back in Michigan before I came down here. So um, we were working remotely there as well. Talking about conflict, um, when I, I, I think back in my other position, there might have been because we have almost everybody working remotely mm -hmm. and seeing that potential for conflict or misinterpretation. I would use it as misinterpretation more than conflict. Right. Um, uh, but, and, and so coming here, um, I've actually kind of seen the opposite in just the short time that I've been here um, meeting together as a team. We're, we're trying to figure out our routine when we meet as a team, but I, it does definitely help when we, we can meet routinely. Um, and I don't know if, what my teammates would say about that, but um, it's, I'm, I'm seeing that misinterpretation level going down as opposed to up. So it's been a, that has been really good. That's wonderful. And, and you know, that brings, that brings up an, an important point. You know, one of the reasons in the social cues for, and the context, um, you know, we know that things that are written in email or text or chat, you know, they, you lose the inflection, like the voice inflection. So for example, if we take the sentence, um, my supervisor promoted that woman, that simple sentence, my supervisor promoted that woman. You know, if, if I said something like, my supervisor promoted that woman, that's different than saying, my supervisor promoted that woman or my supervisor promoted that woman. You know what I'm saying? So it's like a lot of the, a lot of the things that make communication richer and that give different, different takes on things. Um, you know, you just don't get it so much in, and, and even in the virtual environment that can be hampered a little bit. Right. And so, you know, but it's, I think the regularity of communication, the intentionality of communication, and just in general, the, the um, focus on people that managers are, are demonstrating now during this time, that's what's going to create the, the, the brand. And going in the future, you know, if you look at what the trends are for attracting employees, and let's say, you know, we're beyond this and companies are really trying to attract employees the employment brand is huge. And so it's, you know, people will recognize the healthy employment brands that, that come out of uh, post COVID and, and how people were treated and, you know, some of the softer sides of management that, that we have mm -hmm. to do now too. Mm -hmm. And so. So Dana, Amber is interested in implementing the stand up meetings. Can you repeat the three questions that you recommended for those? Sure. So um, what you do is number one, you say, what do we need to get accomplished today? What do we need to, to, to get accomplished today? Does anybody need any help? 
and are there any issues or challenges that we face? And so, you know, those three questions will really let you kind of align, you know, here's where we are today, here's what we need to do, here's, you know, if you have somebody that needs help, they have the opportunity to share, and then you can talk about any upcoming issues that, you know, might be down the line that, that someone might need to be proactively addressing. Would you be willing to share your PowerPoint with us so we could share it with those that um, on the, on the um, call today? Sure, I'd be glad to. Okay. Yeah, and Amy had um, a really good suggestion. They did a two question survey um, since some people weren't comfortable bringing up personal challenges mm -hmm. um, during meetings. They wrote out a two question survey. What are the challenges you are experiencing during this time of pandemic and how can we support you during this time? Um, and they set it up to where it was optional um, if the person wanted to give their name yeah, and they've received so really good feedback from that survey. Um, yeah. Amy, do you wanna unmute and add to that? Hi, yeah, I can. Um, we just have a lot of challenges. Um, I work for Service One Credit Union, so we are still an essential business. Mm -hmm. We do have the same challenges with social distancing. Some of the people that are still there, about half of us are working from home, including myself. Um, so we do have some folks who, you know, they're just nervous or they're trying to balance work with childcare and we even have some associates who just said, you know, it's hard for me. I go to work all day and then I have to come home and do differential equations with my teenager and I don't even know how to do it. So, you know, they just got some real struggles. And just even from that one instance, we had another associate who loved differential equations. So we kind of put that associate with the other person's kid just to kind of help them out because it's a whole new environment for us right now. So just any little thing that we can do to help. And we got a lot of good feedback from that survey. So I just thought it was a good suggestion maybe to share. Okay. So Amy, do you have anybody over there that has a keen interest in second grade math? Second grade math. I don't know, but I can take a look for you. <laughs> That, yeah, that's, that's fantastic. You know, that, that is, um, that's a really good, that, that's a really neat idea. Yeah. Anything else? No other questions. Well, thank you, Dana. We really, really appreciate you joining us for our session today. Um, this has been recorded. So if anybody's interested in viewing it at, at the business at its best library, uh, through our partnership login portal um, for Chamber Partners. Um, and we will have another Business at its Best on Tuesday, April 28th at 1 p.m. We are doing these weekly and um, as a way to educate, not necessarily so much for COVID, but there will be a COVID thread in most of these, I think, right now. Um, and our Business at its Best next week will be with Kim Wilson of Wilson's C Counseling. Um, and managing stress and anxiety during a pandemic. Um, I think it's a much needed topic, whether you're working remotely or managing a remote team or just working in an office um, and social distancing or physical distancing. Um, so, yeah. So, oh, we also are uh, going to be doing industry sector roundtables where we're trying to get information from our our partners on and any business actually in the community on how things are going for them, what things that are big challenges, if there's things that they can help each other, doing some best practice sharing, as well as finding out other resources that are available through the chamber and the community for them. Um, so we're just trying to get a handle on all of that. So as we come through recovery and start the recovery process, we're gonna be aware of what some of the needs of of the partners and businesses um, in the community are as we move forward. So again, Dana, thank you very much. Really appreciate it. All right. And um, yeah, if anybody has questions in the future, they can um, let Dana ask, of course, Dana or contact us and we'll be happy to, to help connect you. Yes, yes, yes. That, that sounds great. And we have a lot of, lot of folks over at the MBA program that can help in a, a lot of different areas. You just let me know and we're happy to support the community during this time. All right. Wonderful. Well, thank you again, Dana, and stay well, everyone. And I'm, someday I hope to see you and meet you in person. <laughs> yes. Thank you. Bye, y'all. Have you. a good day. Bye-bye.